Um, Holier than thou. Oh, yep. Oh, is, it that, is it that time of the morning? I think it's that time of the morning, Ben, and I know you've been working bloody hard all week. I thought I had to play this yeah. to start us off. Oh, it's been changed. Is it? This is a slightly different one. I do. I still like that one, though. Yeah. That's good. I think it's a copyright thing. Um, well, it's been an odd week for news, uh, and I don't have too much new, but I thought I'd update you lot uh, on some previous contenders and where we're at with some interesting issues. First of all, the most notable thing to come out of an otherwise flat week filled with talks of tunnels and public servants was, of course, that stuff will be taking over the provision of evening news bulletins from the now entirely submerged uh, 3 News or News Hub. Quickly, my thoughts on that and why it's technically making this list. I tweeted this week that bringing stuff in to save television news is like asking a turkey to save Christmas. It can't. It's on the menu, mate. Stuff was bought for a dollar a few years back. Um, with inflation supposedly cooling off a bit, it'd probably go for about 75 cents. Now, as an organisation, it hails from print media, uh, and it's been even arguably a bit shoddy at that in recent times too. It knows about as much about television broadcasting as I do about the Canterbury Knotted Weevil, which if you've been listening this week, you know is precious little. On top of that, of course, there's the issue of the observably left-leaning, overly liberal approach to news coverage, which is refusing to loosen its grip on the nation's journalism industry and is perhaps embraced even more fervently by stuff than it was by News Hub. So there's no solution to that issue uh, with this takeover or even an acknowledgement of its existence. And indeed, it was acknowledged in an article by uh, Mark Jennings of Newsroom who suggested there was a feeling within News Hub that senior executives at Warner Brothers had noticed a left-skewed approach to news at the company and wanted to see it straightened out a bit. So they're not going to have much luck with that in the Department of Stuff. I think we should just uh, leave the entire evening news industry to the spin-off to sort out. That's just my suggestion. But anyway, Stuff kind of made the list this week because they didn't want to talk about the takeover when I asked them, though I suspect most of them were probably busy Googling how to make a television news show, so we'll cut them some slack. Quickly as well, I want to bring your attention back to the mental health minister, Matt Ducey. We've had some talk about that this morning. Uh, he is the minister, we know, responsible for whatever our response is going to be to the NHS move to restrict access to puberty blockers and the independently conducted CAS report which revealed harms associated with both puberty blockers themselves and the often careless context in which they're prescribed. Uh, Ducey's still waiting on that brief from the Minister uh, Ministry of Health. You heard from Bob McCroskey this morning. They've delayed that. So the whole thing is just a shambles. Uh, I can't possibly imagine what's going to be in that report that's going to be so illuminating that no comment from the minister is possible until he receives it. Is it going to be any more illuminating than the already publicly available CAS report? I doubt it. And if the minister isn't capable of formula, uh, forming and vocalising a personal view on this issue by now, then when we're, we're in trouble no matter what uh, that report he's waiting for says. Because in order to move in any discernible direction in, uh, or in response to this issue, there needs to be some intention. Uh, and what the minister's no-show on this issue tells me is either there is no intention or direction whatsoever from the government on this, which is worrying, or they've already made their minds up and they, uh, and they know that you're not going to like it, what they've decided. Uh, I note as well that there's actors on social media with vested interest in this trying to flop nonsense around uh, on Twitter and pay down concerns over puberty blockers. One on Twitter, I think his name was Paul Thistle, we might have talked about this morning, he actually posted a document put together by a known transgender rights activist explaining why harms and puberty blockers are misinformation. Uh, they're not a reliable source because they concern themselves with communications over trans issues and activism. And second, a good deal of the concerns around blockers, if they'd actually read the report, the CAS report that is, uh, is the often careless and needless context in which they're prescribed to kids who in many cases don't actually need them. There are a number of medical interventions that are completely harmless in the right context. A leg amputation would be life-saving for someone with gangrene, but a damn shame for someone who went to the doctors with a sore throat. So that's rubbish, isn't it, Paul? And anyone else uh, who's trying to pick people or trick them into thinking this is a misinformation campaign and give the government an easy out on this issue in that regard. Uh, that's just a general bit of an update on uh, the... The people who have been refusing to get in touch with us, we are going to be going uh, gangbusters on the, or full court press on Matt Ducey next week, trying to get some answers out of them as well. And maybe to Papa too, just for good measure.